Today we're taking a look at the father of the merino industry. So you may have seen this gentleman's face on the $2 note. His name is John MacArthur and he is incredibly famous. You'll see a lot of things dedicated to him all around Sydney. You can even go visit his estate, which was the first heritage listed estate in New South Wales. So John MacArthur was incredibly famous and has very strong ties to the merino industry. And whilst doing some research for this video, I was fascinated to learn that Australia is actually the largest exporter of wool in the world. And it all started back in the late 1700s with this gentleman, John MacArthur. There's a bit of speculation as to just how involved he was in the breeding process. Some people speculate that a lot of that was left up to his wife, Elizabeth. It sounds like she was doing a lot of the, I guess you could say the hard work, and he was sort of the face of his um, business ventures and was heavily involved in a lot of political things as well. He was often at odds with governors and he had different run-ins with a number of the governors of the day. So the first run-in with Governor Arthur Phillip related to the theft of a cask of spirits, which I believe was later returned. But he wasn't off to a good start with governors and it only got significantly worse from there for him. He was instrumental in the famous Rum Rebellion. This saw the um, removal of Governor William Bly. Uh, there's a very famous image of him being dragged out from under his bed and John MacArthur was heavily involved in that. Um, it's said that he was one of the main instigators of the, the big Rum Rebellion. So an interesting subject, maybe something I'll do a future video on. I'll try and stick just to John and the Merino ties for this video. Following on from his involvement with the Rum Rebellion, uh, he actually went back to England and left his wife Elizabeth in New South Wales to, you know, tend to the flock and manage all of the business uh, ventures that were happening back in New South Wales. And in 1810, Lachlan Macquarie, who you may be familiar with as the governor who was responsible for the introduction of the holy dollar and dump coins, uh, effectively Australia's first ever coins from 1813. Uh, Lachlan Macquarie issued a warrant for the arrest of John MacArthur uh, for his involvement in the Rum Rebellion. So at the time Lachlan Macquarie was looking to reform all of the corruption that was happening within the colony at the time and funnily enough John MacArthur's name was somewhere at the top of his list of people to look into. So John MacArthur came over to New South Wales. He was on board the second fleet. So the first fleet was in 1788. He was part of the second fleet. And it sounds like he had a bit of an issue with authority even back then. Uh, it's, there is reports of him having a duel with the shipmaster because he felt he didn't have enough space for his family on the ship and that the convicts on board were taking up too much space. So it sounds like no one was off limits for, for John. He was a bit of a, a bit of a character. Interestingly, Joseph Banks, who appears on the $5 note, wasn't too friendly with John MacArthur. They actually butted heads uh, regarding the import and export of livestock back in the day. So Joseph Banks thought that the law was quite clear cut and that was not something that was permitted. However, John MacArthur had a number of very powerful political ties and was, yeah, actively importing and exporting livestock. So that's it. I find that quite interesting that you have people both featuring on the banknotes that actually weren't even friends. I guess it makes sense, you know, they are both um, highly, uh, highly regarded Australian, influential Australian characters. Um, but I was interested during this period of research to learn that John MacArthur was actually... I'm not sure if he was well liked by everyone in the colony at the time, but it certainly looks like people of uh, high political ranking and certainly governors of the day did not get on well at all with him. And he was incredibly powerful. It sounds like he had a lot of um, influence over the, you know, the local military and things like that. And he certainly wasn't someone that you wanted to get on the wrong side of. So on to the Merino. Let's take a look. And I have a theory that this particular Merino ram on the $2 note may be the very same one from the shilling. So in 1939, this particular design was implemented 
and it's confirmed that it was a particular Merino ram that was featured in one of the Sydney agricultural shows and the I'm going to butcher the pronunciation but it looks like it's Uadri? I'm gonna say Uadri the, the ram <laughs> so this was in 1932 and a lot of people were cited as claiming that this was the perfect representation of the ideal Merino ram. And so for this reason, it was chosen to feature on the shilling of the day. And I speculate, I haven't confirmed this, but I think it may very well be that same ram on this particular banknote. Either that or maybe it was a, you know, a select ram from John MacArthur's flock. I'm not actually sure if anyone has any information on that. I'd love to learn a little more about it. So all in all, John MacArthur seems like a fascinating character. I've done a lot of research. There's plenty of interesting books that have been published on the subject. It sounds like his family were also very interesting and highly influential uh, with a number of successful business ventures. But overall, he doesn't actually seem like he was a really nice person. I don't know, maybe I, have, I didn't have the pleasure of meeting him. Maybe he was a delight to spend a bit of time with, but it sounds like everywhere he went, there was all sorts of issues. Although who knows, maybe the governors back then were problematic and he was just trying to, you know, do his thing and tend to his flocks. He did have an incredible volume of sheep back in the day and significant plots of land. Uh, there were also a number of issues relating to that. You know, deals were arranged and he, had, he was butting heads with the governors as in terms of how much land was being allocated to him. It's also interesting to note that a lot of the land that he was using for his, um, for his sheep were not actually paid for. Um, they were given to him as grants. So some people say he was the original lucky Australian. Uh, at any rate, he had a fascinating life. In the end, uh, I believe he was estranged from his family. So they, they ended up effectively putting him in permanent care. Um, they said that he had lost his faculties and was unable to attend to his business. And as a result, his children took over his business. So not the happiest of endings, but a fascinating character in Australian history. If you find this kind of thing interesting, I'd be happy to do more episodes on different banknotes or iconic Australian characters. Um, there was a request to do a video on the shilling, the ram from the shilling. So hopefully this ties into that and answers some of the questions that you might have. At any rate, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.